this is going to be another question and answer video and this question has to do with does a ministry or a preacher or somebody who willingly rejects the king james even even though he's got all the evidence that the king james is the real word of god if he rejects the king james and uses the modern versions of the bible will god still bless him and his church and his ministry uh, i believe the answer is that uh, god can bring good out of anything but in, there's some things that this guy is going to put on the shelf with the King James Bible. So I'm going to give you seven things thrown on the shelf with the King James Bible. And hopefully answer your question that way. The first thing is faith. When you put that King James Bible on the shelf, you're putting faith on the shelf. In Romans 10:17 it says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. When Christians put the King James Bible on the shelf, their faith is shaken. Whether they know it or not, they can say they got faith all they want to, but faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And if you have the counterfeit Bibles, your faith will be shaken if you're using those. I mean, you may still believe the fundamentals, but you lose faith in the Word of God. I was listening to a live stream of a pastor who was using several different versions of the bible and his sermon was about being excited about the word of god and he's trying to encourage the people to get excited about the word of god while at the same time teaching that they don't have the perfect word of god because you need to realize that men who use different versions of the bible they do not believe that we have a perfect bible for today they teach it is only perfect in the originals that is on the actual copy that Moses and Paul wrote, they believe that's perfect. They believe what you have today is not perfect. So how can you get excited about something that may or may not be right? That don't make no sense to me. But what we believe as Bible believers is that God preserved it all the way up until even today. And I believe I have the perfect words of God in my hand and it's complete truth. And those who hold on to the new versions, they check out. When it comes to faith in a perfect Bible, they believe they can change it. They believe it has some errors in it. That's not faith. Uh, we don't believe we can change the words. We need to let the words change us. I'm very, very close-minded, very extreme when it comes to this topic. And when I see somebody correcting the book, I go the other way. A ministry that uses the new versions of the Bible has a shaken faith, and they will shake your faith. If you think if you think one part of the Bible is wrong, you're going to start thinking other parts of the Bible is wrong. And you're leaving an open door for the devil to come in and say, how do you know any of it is right? And when somebody comes to me and says, this ain't right in the Bible, or something like that, I go the other way. Uh, you, you put the King James on the shelf... And you also tucked your faith in there with it like a bookmark and closed inside of it, collecting dust on the shelf. And a ministry or a preacher or church or whatever else that uses the new versions of the Bible, there, there may be people saved there. They may have nice things, but they will shake your faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. They check out when it comes to believing in a perfect Word of God. So I run the other way. The next thing is growth. One of the things that somebody's going to put on the shelf at the King James Bible is their growth. In 1 Peter 2 and verse 2, it says, As newborn babes desire the sincere, mir sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. Another thing you'll lose when you lose your King James Bible is growth. If you're ever going to grow as a Christian, you're going to have to stick your face in the Bible. And when you change your Bible you see your growth get on the shelf with the King James Bible. And to deny that is to deny 1 Peter 2 too. You have men today trying to put poison in your milk. It's making Christians stay babes in Christ. And the exceptions don't overthrow the rule. Uh, the more you learn about Jesus Christ, the more you are going to grow. 2 Peter 3.18 says, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. If you have a new Bible, 
then you're not going to grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because they subtly attack the deity of Christ. It subtly attacks the sinlessness of Christ. It subtly attacks the virgin birth of Christ. It will give Satan the title of morning star instead of Jesus Christ. And a guy once called me nitpicky for pointing out these things about the new versions. But when it comes to the words of God, we don't want our Bible changed by professors who profess themselves to be wise. Matthew 5.18 says, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. We care about every jot and tittle, every eye, the line and the dot on top. We are nitpicky when it comes to the Bible. And if you're not, you're not a Bible believer. The way to grow up in the Lord is to stick with the book. Psalms 1, 1 through 3. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the city of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. When you put your King James on the shelf, you lost your faith, you put your faith up there with it. And that's a proven fact because you admit yourself you don't have faith in the Word of God. And you stunt your growth. If you put it up too high, you may not be able to get it back down without a ladder if you, if you decide to come back to it. Because you stunt your growth and you start shrinking. Uh, but God lets a new version user, somebody that uses the new versions, He may let them win souls. He may help them do some good things. But a preacher of the new versions will not help you grow, and he, he will not help your, your faith. He'll shrink your growth and lose, help you lose faith. And another thing you're going to put on the shelf when you put the King James on the shelf is Revelations. In Daniel 2.22 it says, He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in, dark, in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. Daniel 2.28, But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets. Amos 3, 7, Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. God knows things. He knows he's the God of knowledge. He knows all things. And he has to reveal us those things. When a man starts to correct the book, he loses out on revelations that he would have gotten. When we are living in a day when the Bible version issue is out there. The truth is out there. It's not like when Schofield and Larkin were around and other good men who may have been not so knowledgeable on the issue. But there are still people who are ignorant on the issue today. But there are a lot of men who know all about it and they still choose to reject the Word of God. And when they do this, the Lord doesn't reveal stuff to them that He would have if they had stayed with the book. Everything you know about the Bible, the Lord had to reveal it to you, even the gospel itself. If God didn't reveal it to you, then you wouldn't know it. And there are things that God can show you that He hasn't shown anyone else. Even little practical truths just to help you make it through the day. You throw this out when you throw the book out. And there are things that you only find in the King James Bible that you won't find anywhere else. For example, when a, like a country preacher has the King James Bible, he gets up to preach and it's like bombs dropping. He may not have even made it past the third grade, but he has the right book and God has revealed it to him. When a college-educated Bible rejecter gets up, it's weak, it's soft, it's cute at best. He may have a cute little outline, but nothing fresh for the congregation. It's not fresh at all. The word never changes. But it's like if you had that, if you had this bread that never went stale. It's always fresh every time you open the King James. A New Age Bible version guy won't give you something fresh. Even though they claim the new versions are more up to date and more modern day, they're just full of it. The, the, it all the revelations that you would have gotten had you kept the King James, you put those on the shelf. The next thing is doctrine. In 2 Timothy 3.16, it says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. You will find that when most preachers put the KJV on the shelf, they put doctrine on the shelves. 
And the exceptions only prove the rule. You need doctrinal preaching. This is what makes the Bible come alive. You need preaching that has some depth to it. Sometimes when you hear a great preacher, it's like his sermons has so many layers to it that you can listen to it over and over and you just keep learning. This shows he's been in the book. If he is good, then he'll have doctrine, practical application, and the word of God throughout. This is the best kind of preaching. Paul tells Timothy to preach the word. If you listen to the average modern Bible version pastor, he doesn't have layers of depth. It's like as thin as the cheapest Walmart brand toilet paper. It's paper thin. It's a cute little outline at best. Maybe some cute little sayings to get some applause, but there's no doctrine. It may be some good quotes, but it isn't the Word of God, and there's no doctrine. Teaching sound doctrine is what keeps you on track. It keeps the men interested in the Bible. It keeps your people from being overcome by the cults and the wolves. Uh, 2 Timothy 4.3 says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Titus 1.9, Holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught that he may be able by sound doctrine, both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. Titus 2, 1, But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Mark 1, 22, And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. Some of my favorite all-time sermons are doctrinal sermons where a man picks a certain doctrine or something and shows you the truth of it throughout the scriptures. And you don't have that much anymore. This is why men do not know the Bible and when you throw out the KJV, you put it on the shelf, your doctrine gets tucked up under it, there with it. Because if you listen to these guys that do the modern versions, there's no doctrine. It's devotional stuff only. Very little word of God even, even mentioned. It's cute little sayings to get some applause and that's about it. But you throw the doctrine on the shelf with the King James. The next thing you're going to throw on the King James, with the King James on the shelf is sanctification. In John 17, 17, it says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Psalm 119, 9, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. Romans 7, 13, Was then that which is good made death unto me, God forbid, but sin that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. There's something about reading the King James Bible that will help you clean your life up. It makes sin seem exceeding sinful. When you put your King James Bible on the shelf, a lot of times you put your sanctification up there with it. If you pay attention to ministries that have put the King James on the shelf, you will notice they are weak in their sanctification department. And I am to sanctify myself daily. I'm to set myself apart from the world and live for God. James 4.4, 4, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know you not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. 1 John 2.15, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You will find that ministries and churches that use the modern versions will have lower standards on dress. The women will dress more immodestly many times, and the men will many times dress like sodomites, especially the pastors. And I'm not usually one to say much about clothes, but a man should dress like a man, a woman should dress like a woman. And I sometimes see clips of modern uh, preachers in their churches. And they have on these really tight pants. They got on like a long t-shirt with their chest showing. I mean, this is not modest apparel. Um, they're trying to dress like a young person and it just looks corny and stupid. And no lost person is really going to take this serious other than thinking you're like the cool stepdad or something. The new Bibles and worldly dress go together, you'll find most times. I'm not trying to sound judgmental. That's just... It's just how it is. Look it up and you see these modern pastors, how they dress. You're going to see sanctification go out the window. You'll find most times that new Bibles go together with worldly church music. I mean, if a Christian singer can perform on the Ellen DeGeneres show, I'd be weary of it. If Ellen, a, a, a homosexual, is going to call a Christian artist on there, I'd be weary of that Christian artist because, you know, what is her music standing for? There's something about worldly music in church that should make you blush if your heart is where it ought to be.
if there is uh, no scripture for contemporary music being wrong, you can put, at least put it under First Thessalonians 5.22, which says, abstain from all appearance of evil. If it sounds like the world, then the world is going to think it's theirs, and if they see you listening to it, they will think you're one of them. I mean, imagine driving down the road, you're listening to the contemporary Christian music. It's bumping and grinding. I mean, you can't hear the words. The person next to you can't hear the words. You're going to think, ain't that woman... Ain't that that woman from church over there listening to some rap or some rock or something? They're going to think you're one of them because it's got that same beat to it. I mean, I don't have a bunch of verses saying contemporary Christian music is wrong. I don't. But in my for myself, I put it under 1 Thessalonians 5.22, abstained from all appearance of evil. I don't want anybody to even think I'm listening to that filthy music. And that's just, that's my view on that. That's I mean, that could be a personal conviction. At, for, for the contemporary Christian music, I've thought that lately, but I know it'll be wrong for me. And you know, abstain from all appearance of evil. It looks like you're doing something you shouldn't be doing when you listen to that music. I didn't say you wouldn't like it. There's a lot of things that we like that aren't right, but just because you like it doesn't mean you should listen to it. When it comes to contemporary music, my spirit doesn't like it, and my flesh doesn't even like it. My flesh likes the real thing. If I'm going to listen to bad music, it says, go ahead and put on my real hard stuff. That's just how wicked my flesh is. You see, I'm not trying to sound judgmental. I'm probably more wicked than you are. My flesh is. But I choose not to listen to the real bad stuff because it ain't right. But if a church or a pastor or ministry is so low on morals that they will change the words of God, they will also play filthy music and let the women dress in tight clothes and dance to it. And when you put that King James on the shelf, your sanctification really takes a hit. The next thing that's going to take a hit that you're going to put on the shelf with the King James is power and strength. And Ecclesiastes 8, 4, it says, For the word of a king is, there is power. When, the, when you put the King James on the shelf, there goes your power. Like I said, an educated country preacher has more power because of the words he's using he stuck with the King James. Then half the time you see these guys with the new versions, they have no power. It sounds weak. It sounds forced. It sounds cliche. It sounds extremely effeminate. There's something about the new versions that make the preachers just sound limp-wristed. Not trying to be mean, but listen to them. What you have with the King James are powerful words. And these are the words of the same God that spoke words spoke the world into existence and brought everything into existence with words. Hebrews 1.3, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Jesus Christ taught doctrine and he taught it with power because he is the word. Luke 4.32, and they were astonished at his doctrine for his word was with power. When you put the King James on the shelf, you lose your power and you lose your strength. Nehemiah 8.10 says, The joy of the Lord is your strength. Nothing will bring you as much joy than to have a Bible that you know is true and dedicate your life to learning it and teaching it to other, other people. The greatest Bible students I know are King James guys. Not saying modern version users simply don't read the Bible. There are exceptions. Some of them do. But think about the greatest Bible students you know and Bible teachers you know. They are King James Bible believers. When you have the truth and know it, this brings the joy of the Lord, and that is your strength. Jeremiah fifteen sixteen. Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. The church of Philadelphia, if you read about them in the book of Revelation, they kept his word, and it says they have a little strength in Revelation 3.8. But that brings us to the final thing we'll talk about. What do you put on the shelf with the King James Bible? When Christians put the King James Bible on the shelf, they put the Philadelphia church period on the shelf. In Revelation 3.8-10 through 10, it says, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make 
them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee, because thou hast kept the word of my patience. Also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. The church, this church here represents a certain time of church history that's in the past. It had saints living back then that kept his words. This is when you have the great preachers, the great revivals, the holy living, the doctrine, the faith. This was the Philadelphian church period. When Christians put the King James on the shelf and started accepting the new versions more and more, it got us in a mess. Now we are in Laodicea, the church of Laodicea. That church represents the time of church history that we're in right now. Revelation 3, 15 and 17 talks about them. It says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. We are living in a time when people are content. They're not cold. They're not hot. They're lukewarm. They're content. When you're content, you don't grow. You lose your growth because you're not worried about growing. When you're content, you don't see any need in bettering yourself. You think you don't need to study. You don't need to read the Word of God because you think you already know it. You think you're not that bad. The modern version Bible preacher convinces you that you're good just like you are. He makes you think gain is actually godliness. And so if you're rich and increased with goods, then you think you're not poor, miserable, blind, and naked, as God called Laodicea. What we have today is a bunch of Christians that want to live like the world, listen to the same music that they listen to. It's like they, they think they must go undercover to reach the world, so they dress up like the world, talk like the world, and everything else. It makes no sense. They're trying to help people by acting like the very thing that's bringing the people down to begin with so the answer to the question after that long whatever that was is can a preacher church or ministry who willingly rejects the king james bible as the perfect word can they be blessed by god well in the sense god can still have souls being saved there the answer is yes, because while the devil may mean something for evil, God can bring something good out of it. So, I mean, they're going to have things like that. Uh, Genesis 50 and verse 20, But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring it to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. While people be, may be meaning things for evil or for worldly gain, God can still bring something good out of it. But, I mean, their motive is wrong many times and if their motives wrong they're not getting rewards for any of the good stuff that happens because god's going to try every man's work of what sort it is and as far as god looking on them and saying well done my good and faithful servant i don't believe this is so because they aren't even keeping his words a basic thing they can't even keep his words. They may have nice clothes. They may have nice cars, nice buildings, the best sound equipment, the best sounding singers, the best looking people. But gain isn't godliness. And Laodicea thinks that since she is rich and increased with goods, that she is well off. But it says in Matthew 5.45 that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good. And sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Just because you have a lot of things. Just because good things are happening to you. Does not necessarily mean that you're right with God at all. Gain is not godliness. And God maketh the Son to rise on the evil and on the good. And the devil will also give you things in exchange for doing his work. So, I mean, it's a, it's kind of a tricky question. Can God bless those people? In, in the sense of maybe some souls will get saved from, from their ministry. It's very possible. But overall, I would stay away from them. I would run the other way. If your pastor is using new versions of the Bible... I would show him about the, tell him about the Bible version issue, give him the benefit of the doubt, and if he doesn't uh, believe it, I would go the other way. I, I'm, I personally, I'm not going to go to a church where they use the new versions of the Bible. I mean, because he's going to shake your faith in the Bible. So, 
I mean, I'm I'm very I am very extreme on this topic. You'll find mostly that I tell you to settle in the middle on certain things, but on this one, I'm very extreme. I'm King James only. I'm not only that, but I'm a King James Bible believer. I'm very narrow-minded about the topic because I've I've known about the topic for years. So I completely believe you need to stay with the King James and those were seven things you throw on the shelf with the King James Bible. So stick with this stuff. Don't give in just because it's popular. Don't give in just because somebody's telling you to. Stay with the King James even if it may not be popular.